Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to knit the scarf like this one, with a beautiful peacock design using ribbon yarn. This one here was knitted by Bettina Gucci from my Wooly Hugs group. Thank you Bettina for lending me this to create a tutorial. To knit this scarf she used the Wooly Hugs Bandy Wish, which is a ribbon yarn that's 100% cotton. It comes with a length of 210 meters per 100 grams. Let me measure the scarf for you so that you know how wide it is. The width is 30 centimeters. That's about 11.8 inches. Let's see how long it is. I just fold it in half and measure it like that. So this would be 70 centimeters times 2 equals 140 centimeters and that is a length of about 55.1 inches. As far as I know Bettina used roughly 200 gram of the ribbon yarn. Let me check that for you. Yes, 186. Almost two balls of yarn for these 140 centimeters. If you want to use three balls of yarn, you can almost get your scarf to two meters in length. Or the 140 with the two that we have here. The Wooly Hux Bandy comes in a lot of different colors. There's the Bandy Wish, and also the Bandy Uni, and last but not least, the Bandy Color. All of them have the same length and the same structure, so you can use any of them on the design. I'm going to use this color here for my tutorial, just because I don't want to start a new ball of yarn and use up my leftover yarn. We use a knitting needle size 6, which is a UK 4 or a US 10. I'm using the one from my add-in needle case. You find the cords back here in this pocket. Alright, needle size 6. You can try it out and then use what works best for you. Later on we'll also need a needle and a darning needle to sew in the loose ends. You can find all the tools you need in this case here. I put a link for that in the description box below. Now you attach the needles to the cord and then we're all set. Bettina cast it on 55 stitches for the scarf. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I now cast it on my 55 stitches, and now we continue with the knitting chart. The sample set repeats itself three times. Each set is 17 stitches long. So all your stitches have to be divisible by 17, plus four additional stitches for a nice border left and right. So your 55 stitches are made up of three times the sample set, so three times 17 stitches, which equals 51 stitches, plus the four additional stitches, 55. In case you want to knit an even wider scarf or a sweater, you just add sets of 17 stitches until you have the wanted width. 
here that's 51 stitches. With four sample sets it'd be 68 stitches. Plus the four additional stitches we'd have 72 stitches. And just like that you keep adding 17 stitches at a time so that the pattern stays nice and even. Let's begin with row number one. For that we knit all stitches. We slip the border stitch and then knit all stitches. The first couple of rows of our scarf are in garter stitch. That's why we knit all the stitches. It's going to prevent the end from curling up. And it looks nice. If you like, you can visit our Woolly Hugs group on Facebook. I put a link in the description box below. It's a fun community where you can ask questions, get help and exchange ideas and designs. You can even upload pictures of things you made, either after a design from my tutorial or one that is your own. Always worth a look. This number here will show you the row I'm currently in. Just in case you want to rewind this video and to make sure you don't get lost. Okay, here at the end we knit the border stitch as well. Next, we turn our work and then do the exact same as before and knit the whole row. We again slip the border stitch and then knit all the remaining stitches. You do the same for row 3, 4 and 5. So I see you again at row 6. Just keep knitting the rows up to row 5. Always slip the first stitch and then we meet again for row number 6. Welcome back to row 6. You can see we knitted the first 5 rows in garter stitch. In row 6 we also slip the first border stitch. Get the yarn in front of your work, slip the stitch and then take the yarn back behind your work. Then we knit the first stitch and after that we start with the first set. The one that you then just keep repeating. We knit two stitches together three times. One. Two, three. Then five times one yarn over and one knit stitch. Yarn over, knit one, one. Yarn over, knit one, two. Yarn over, knit one, three. Yarn over, knit one, four. Yarn over. Knit one, five, five times. And after these, we yarn over one more time. Altogether, we now did six yarn overs and five knit stitches. Next, we will do a one stitch decrease. For that, we slip one stitch, then knit the following stitch, and after that, pass a slipped stitch over. So slip this stitch, then knit the following, and then with my left needle, I pick up the slipped stitch and pass it over. We do that three times. Two. Three. After that, we repeat the set. We knit two stitches together three times. One. Two. 
3, then 5 times 1 yarn over and 1 knit stitch, 3, 4, 5, yarn over one more time, and after that we decrease one stitch by passing over three times. This was our second set, and now we're gonna repeat it one last time. We knit two stitches together three times. One, two, three, then five times one yarn over and one knit stitch, three, four, five, and then yarn over one more time. And after that, we decrease one stitch by passing over three times. The last two stitches we knit as usual. Turn around your work and we're ready to continue with row 7. Slip the border stitch, and after that, purl all remaining stitches. We purl all stitches and all yarn overs. The peacock pattern or wave pattern is built because the yarn overs are not right next to the two stitches knit together, but a few stitches away. We knit two stitches together three times and only then we work all the yarn overs. And because of that, the pattern generates these waves. The peacock pattern is very popular. There's a variety of different designs, so it's nothing new. We just tested out a design with this ribbon yarn, just to see how many stitches you need for a scarf that is 30 cm wide. We knit the last stitch, so the border stitch is a knit stitch, and then turn our work. On to row number 8. We again slip the border stitch, that stays the same. And then knit all other stitches. Basically we're back to garter stitch for this row. And I can already tell you that we will do the same for row number 9. So row 8 and row 9 in garter stitch. You'll be able to see them later in the pattern. Basically only the 6th row is a row where you build the pattern. So that's the only one where you have to pay attention and count your stitches. For all other rows you just have to see whether to purl all stitches, like in row 7, or to knit them, like in row 8 or 9. Because after finishing the 9th row, you just keep repeating 4 rows. Row 6 to row 9. So when we finish row 9, we start again with row 6. Alright, this is the end of row 8. 
turn your work and slip the border stitch to start row 9. After that, we again knit all stitches. Then you can see here how the rows form these lines that add to the look of the peacock pattern because they make the waves more visible. As I mentioned before, this pattern also is perfect for a light sweater because the ribbon yarn is not too heavy. Just cast on enough stitches and also end with a couple of rows and garter stitch at the top end. Front and back is the same, you could do a boat neckline, sleeves and done, if you like. All right, that was row nine. So from now on, you just keep repeating the rows six to nine, and you'll see how the waves form row after row. Here on the front, you can nicely see the ninth row that we did in garter stitch, and how it nicely stylized the waves. Whether you use 200 grams or 300 grams for your scarf, that's totally up to you. Depends on how long you want your scarf to be. I hope you had fun with this tutorial. If so, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. I frequently upload new ideas and designs. Hope to see you soon. Love, Veronica.